In this video, we'll take a look at the Raspberry Pi 5 Starter Kit from CaniKit. We'll unbox it, assemble it, check it out with Pi Desktop, and help you determine if it's right for you. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. I'd like to express a big thank you to our friends at CaniKit for sending over the Raspberry Pi 5 Starter Kit. This kit includes everything you'll need, including the Raspberry Pi 5. The version you'll see in this video is the 8GB model, but there is also a 4GB variant that is about $20 cheaper if you prefer. I'll place links in the description below. If you're watching this video after mid-January 2024, these kits should already be shipping. At the time of this recording, however, they are available for pre-order and will ship in late December and early January. When you open the box, a thank you card will be the first thing you'll see, and based on my experience and comments from others, Canakit support has historically been top notch. On the back of the card is a handy GPIO reference card, so you may want to hold on to it. You'll also find two micro HDMI to HDMI cables for connecting two displays to your Pi 5, a Samsung 128GB U3 A2 card, which is a very good quality micro SD with Pi OS desktop pre-installed. A Canakit branded fan, which you'll see in just a few moments, is extremely quiet and does a great job of keeping the Pi cool. A CaniKit heatsink with thermal pads already applied on the back of the heatsink for you, as well as a USB-C power supply which provides a maximum of 45 watts of power, and here's a close-up of all the details. A USB to micro SD card reader, which will be handy if you want to use the Pi to flash another operating system directly from the Pi. That is, you won't need a separate computer to install a new operating system to the Pi 5. You can do it all from the Pi itself with this reader. Of course, we also have the CaniKit case, which we'll take a look at in more detail shortly, as well as the Raspberry Pi 5 itself. Next, we'll assemble the kit. We'll start the assembly with the case. The case shown here is the Turbine Black Edition. It comes in three different pieces. The top cover can be easily removed, and there is enough space between the two pieces to add a GPIO extension cable between them if needed. Inside the case are ventilation holes to help improve airflow, as well as access all of the main ports. The rubber feet are pre-installed, and the overall design of the case looks very nice. It is a high gloss case, and as a result easily shows fingerprints. The case does provide additional clearance for potential hat boards, such as a possible future PoE hat. The top of the case includes four snap-on mounts for the fan. Let's install the fan into the Pi 5. I want to mention there is a quick way you can tell which Pi model this is by the small resistor. It will indicate anywhere from 1 to 8 gigabytes of RAM. And if you'd like to learn more about the Pi 5 itself, I'll place a link above to a video that goes into more detail about the Pi 5. On the back of the Pi is the slot for the micro SD card, which we'll install once assembled into the case. Installing the fan into the case is very easy. It can only go one way, and that is with the CaniKit logo should be facing you, and it just snaps in. On the Pi 5 itself, there is a small cover over the fan port that you can remove with your fingernails or a pair of tweezers. Plug in the fan cable into the port such that the yellow wire is facing the left side of the board, and push it down snugly. Next, take the heatsink, and on the back you'll find five thermal pads that are already pre-installed. One thing I like to do is figure out the alignment before removing the protective covers. The small Ethernet transceiver chip serves as a good guide for the installation as its orientation differs from the rest of the chips. Now remove the protective covers from each of the pads, align it to the chip, and over the remaining chips and then press down firmly. If the bottom portion of the case isn't already removed, go ahead and pop it out by pressing down from the inside of the case. If the fan is attached to the top cover, go ahead and remove it for easier assembly into the case. With the bottom portion of the case laying flat, angle the pie slightly at about 15 degrees. 
then bring it down and it will sit perfectly into the case. Take the side or middle portion of the case and lay it over the base assembly. Then reattach the fan to the top cover and snap the top cover into the middle portion of the case. Now that we have the case fully assembled with the Pi 5, let's take a look at it. This small black piece is the power button. It's nothing fancy, but it does simplify the installation and it works okay. All the ports line up just fine on the side, as well as the ethernet and USB ports, and the ventilation holes were a good design decision for proper airflow. At this point, we're all ready to plug everything up. Take the micro HDMI and plug it into the port nearest the USB-C power port. Then insert the 128 gigabyte micro SD card containing PiOS desktop into the slot at the bottom of the case. Connect a USB keyboard and mouse. Here I'm using the official Pi keyboard and mouse, but any will work. Lastly, connect the power and we'll take a brief look around and I'll provide my final thoughts. Next, we'll set up Pi Desktop and perform some tests. When the Pi starts up the first time, it will reboot twice. That's perfectly normal. You'll then be prompted with the Pi Desktop Setup Wizard. There is more information in the Getting Started video mentioned earlier and also linked below. However, we'll quickly set it up. Just click the Next button, select your country, language, time zone, and check if you'll be using the English language and a US keyboard. Once set, click the Next button. Enter your username and your password to log into the Pi twice, then click Next. If you'll be using a Wi-Fi connection, select your Wi-Fi network name or SSID and click Next. Enter your Wi-Fi password and again click Next. Select your browser, I'll leave it set for Chromium, and then again click Next. I highly recommend you update at this point, click Next to proceed. This process will take some time, so I'll go ahead and skip forward. Once complete, click the OK button and the button to restart. We're now back in Pi Desktop. I'll launch the Chromium browser and visit wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash rpi5. From the table of contents, I'll select Stress Test and we'll check the temperature of the Pi 5 with the Canna Kit. I'll copy the command to install Stress and paste it into a terminal window. And the same to run the Stress Test. I'll fast forward about 12 minutes into the test. The maximum temperature I saw with the Canna Kit was 74.7 degrees Celsius, which was just one degree lower than the maximum of 75.7 with the official Active Cooler and Pi case. The two are very similar in terms of cooling temperature and neither got hot enough to enter thermal throttling. However, there is one distinctive difference with the fan in the Canna Kit. It's about six decibels quieter than the fan included with the active cooler. At least it was in this test. In fact, it was so quiet, I had to shut down the Pi with the camera on the fan to verify it was even running. So the question is, is the Canna Kit worth it? If you're going to buy each component individually on Amazon, you'll likely wind up paying more than the cost of the 8GB Pi 5 starter kit from Canna Kit. Here I've selected the equivalent options on another site and it priced out to $127.95. Keep in mind this selection includes a 32GB microSD card versus a 128GB Samsung U3A2 card from Canna Kit. A microSD to USB reader is also included with the Canna Kit. The official power supply is 27 watts versus 45 watts on the Canna Kit and the HDMI cable is 3 feet instead of 6 feet with the Canna Kit. The price difference between the two is about $32. However, you're getting a 45 watt power supply, 128 gigabyte micro SD card preloaded with Pi Desktop, a USB to micro SD card reader, and a fan that is noticeably quieter than the active cooler. I'll leave it for you to decide which you prefer. That brings us to the end of another video. I hope you found it informative. If you did, I would appreciate it if you clicked the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I hope you'll consider doing so. 
And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.